I got no time to joke around with all that kind of stuff today, man. I'm in a serious mood. I want to seriously get to the bottom of the Norman Sackheim saga, man. You remember the FG7? The FG7, the Sackheim sack of shit? <laughs> Norma. You remember Norma Guitars? I'm not going to talk that much, I promise. It'll be a short episode. I was at the flea market the other day, and uh, I found a guitar. It was a $15 guitar. I gladly paid it. I didn't haggle with the guy. It was a $15 guitar. You know, the guitar deserved it, so I just paid it. And I turned the corner. I saw this guitar, man. Do you see this guitar, man? It's a Norma guitar, and it's like a nice one, man. This is an FG-17, man. This has got, like, you know what I mean? It's got the special end for Norma, man. You know what I mean? It's a nice, nice. It's all stickers intact, man. It doesn't matter, man. We'll flip it around in a second, you know what I mean? you see the stickers for yourself in your own eyes, man. Like, wow, man. That's incredible. So... Anyway, man, the guy's like, give me $15. I think he heard me negotiating with the other dude. You know what I mean? I, was like, I ain't giving you $15 for that guitar, man. I'm going to give you $10 for that guitar. He's like, what? He's like, this guitar tuners itself worth $10. It's got the fellas around. I was like, I know, man. You're probably right. It's probably worth like $20, man. But I'll only give you 10 You know what I mean? He's like, 15 I was like, nope. I was like, walked away. He's like, all right, 10 10 10 I think he even tried to say 12. I, was like, I wasn't born yesterday, son. So let's flip you around, man. You know, I mean, I'm in a serious mood today. I seriously want to talk about this guitar. Get it running again. Not too much work to be done. Not too much work. We'll take a piece. I'm going to flip you around, man. And there it war, people. There it war. I want to say first and foremost that this guitar, as is, has excellent Excellent, gorgeous, comfortable playing, sleek action. You know what I mean? Nice and low, nice and sleek. You know what I'm saying? It's a gorgeous sort of playing instrument. It's got some kind of truss rod, possibly. Now, I really, really bought it for these. You know what I'm saying? I was like, ooh, look at that. I didn't even see the norm, norm thing. I was looking for, I was doing a, doing a Japanese guitar. And these are kind of expensive one by one. There's a whole set. You know, I'm snapping up guitars like this for 10 bucks a piece at the flea market right now. And I, this was no exception, as I told you, man. You know what I'm saying? It's missing a couple of these little things. But, you know, you've seen me in past videos. And you'll see me in this one reproduce them easily and with ease. Likewise, missing one of these these old guys. White guy. But we'll be able to fix him, too. See, he's got the original cheese bird strings from the early 70s. You know what I mean? In-house made strings, original, missing the high E. You know what I'm saying? Easily remedy, people, easily remedy. Still got this plastic thing. But, as I said in the beginning of the video, it's got excellent action. But it does, ha however, have a outstanding flaw that we got to talk about. You know what I mean? This is like the cousin's, you know, deformed friend that they keep hidden behind the stairs. See this pick card's cracked in half. Hey, you know, Bob G can fix that, man. Well, let's think about why it's cracked in half. It's kind of a weird place. It's because this body, man, unfortunately, has bridge lift. And the bridge lift has caused this because it's screwed to the body. Just break in half. This is pretty dramatic. Young viewers, look away. You see that? See how that bridge has pulled this whole section of the front section of the guitar flat straight up so they bet the wood curved the wood in you know what I'm saying and that pressure of the wood just screwed down plastic pit guard made out of you know recycled you know children I don't know what they're making in Korea 1970 you know who knows you know what I'm saying it's, bro, it's, the Grand Canyon right through that plastic you know what I'm saying? It's upsetting. Now, this isn't an easy fix, man. Isn't an easy fix. You know what I'm saying? I remember my dear friend, the great Dr. Patilla, was telling me about a guitar that had, like, a sunken in top. About a method of doing it with, you know, a heated bag of sand and all kinds of stuff. You know what I mean? He was excited to help me try to restore his Gibson that I had an L1. 
in the 20s, you know what I mean? It had a sunken top, you know what I mean? And there, he explained it was a very difficult process to sort of fix this. You know what I mean? It has a bridge lift kind of thing, man. A sunken top from that, man. You know what I mean? It's the, I got a sunken top and a bridge lift on top of it. You know what I'm saying? It's got a terrible thing, man. Very difficult to sort of get this straight again. So we're going to, you know, hold our hands and try to get this guy back into action. You know? There'll be times we'll cry. There'll be times we'll sigh, man. But hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be laughing along. And we'll be singing and forgetting our blues, man. Now, the other thing, other than that, there's a secondary thing that we're going to need to address. Everything else is like, you know what I mean, pretty, pretty nice on this guy. You know what I mean? It's got all, it's, you know, it's got this little, you know what I'm saying, this drive button. Those are always broken off, man. Always broke it off, man. I mean, not too much separation at the heel. Looks good, actually. Looks like it might have been thrown around and got a slight joust, but we can fix that. We can mask that out. Tuners are all good, nothing bent and straight. And it's a lot of sticker here. The only thing that's missing is a little Korea sticker. How do you know it's a Korea sticker, Bob G? Well, here's the FG7. We still got the sticker, man. We'll just reproduce that, man. We'll make one. We can even see the footprint, man. Hey, we're going to help you adhesive. You're going to come home. You're going to help us adhere to the guitar. We'll use the same adhesive that's on there as a base for our reproduction sticker, people. This is going to be a fun short video. After last week's long video about that Charvel, you know what I mean? I'm sure you guys all need a little break. Well, I still got some windbag moments, so we'll enjoy it together. Right? We'll look after each other. Peace be with us. I'll see you in the lab. Where's my Pepsi, Norma? Listen to me, man. We're going to save these original strings. And it's hard to sort of get that original factory wrap. Back in the 60s, they did this cool way of wrapping strings where there was no string sticking out nub hardly, you know what I mean? And it's hard to redo that factory wrap with the original strings because they tend to break once you try to put them back on. So we got them extremely loosened and sort of affixed with tape around the getter for now so we got wide access to our hole man we can get in and out of there without any grease so what we're going to do we're going to go outside and dump a whole picture of boiling water in this guitar <laughs> i'll see you outside so we're out here nice blustery day basically what we're going to do we're going to take this two liters of boiling water pour it into the sound hole and turn it around with a leak all over this pizza box. You know what I'm saying? We're just going to let this set in the sun, the nice autumn sun all day long. I'll see you after we're all filled up. So just take that, pour it into this hole, and turn it around, flip it around. Got me? See you in a second. And here we are. So it's just like sitting down. You know what I mean? Enjoying the sunlight. Getting a nice tan. <laughs> just boiling water in here, man. Just sitting on that side. The back of the soundboard, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a little bit leaking out. That's it. There you go, man. We'll see you, we'll see you a little bit later, man. I'll tell you the timeline as we go. Alright. All right. We pretty much sat outside for about an hour and a half. Drained it halfway after about a half hour. Drained it the rest of the way after about an hour. Just let it set. You know what I mean? Dripping all the last drips out of it for about a half hour outside. Brought it down. Stuffed about, I don't know, six, seven rags in here. Shook it around trying to get the last little bit of water out. You know what I'm saying? You can already see that fucking totally flat again. You see now all that wood's totally relaxed again. You know what I mean? There's just a little tiny, tiny bump here. A little tiny bump. Nothing like it was. Nothing like it was, people. So, to hammer it home, what we're going to do is we're going to pull out all these rags. We're going to put a little board on top here and put a couple clamps on the side of this. we got a nice countertop here. Side of the countertop just to clamp it straight a little bit. Get the rest of that little bump out. Let's we'll see after we're clamped, man. We'll keep on chatting away. Here we are, man. Clamped out and stamped out, man. 
I was going to put three on here, but I think I'm making my point. I don't want it like a sunken back, man. Got all them rags out of there, man. Hey, rag. Are you in there? No, nobody home. So now we're going to let this set for, I don't know, 24 hours, I guess. Day. Every three or four hours or so. Two hours. We're going to hit it up with a hair dryer for about four or five minutes right into the hole. Not right like, you know what I mean, like super in there. But I mean, you know what I mean. You blow out your hole a little bit, man. I've done this before many times. But, you know, each case is special, so we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? We can't have a patented technique unless we've tested it out billions of times. Now I'm going to test it out with you. After my laboratory experiment. See you in about a day. All right, folks. So it's the next morning. For the most part, it's pretty much dry in there. You know what I mean? We still don't have the 24-hour mark reached, though, so we want to keep plugging away with the hair dryer. You know, every, like I said, two, three hours, four hours, something like that. Just one thing I want to report. I had 3M, medium attack, you know what I mean? You had the actual piece right there. Blue painter's tape, man. It was like good stuff, man. And this had no, like, che checking or anything. It just got a little wet. And I pulled off, just pulled off all that lacquer, man. Pulled off all the lacquer. I used a different kind of tape, you know, right on here. Just to keep them out of the way, but that kind of pissed me off. That's not the end of the world. It's 3M, though, man. It's a big company, man. And painter's tape is supposed to, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? All that research. All those, all those... Animals they killed, spraying adhesive in their eyes. I don't know if they did that, man. I was fucking around. I don't know, you know what I mean? You can still sponsor me 3M, man. I still use your product. So anyway, man, I'm going to take out these little screws here. I'm going to take them out. Work on this pick oil while we're still blowing this out. In the, in the meantime, man, so we're all ready to go. Okay. <laughs> Look after yourself. Peace be with you. Look after yourself. All right, so there's apparently like a little nub of a screw that's like sort of just like wedged in there, like hammered in there somehow. It's like it looks like it's like kind of glued to the pit guard or something, man. And you see these are old cracks. So that's an interesting sort of thing. This is the one that's right over the sound hole. Anyway, let's scrub the piss out of this. Keep away from this little end for Norma. Remember with the magic erase a sponge, get it all white and shiny again. We'll see if we're about to reconnect with our old friends. So I cleaned it off with the magic erase sponge. You know, that kind of takes off the sheen, takes off the shine a little bit. After that, I put a little bit of polishing compound on there. Polished her up so it's got to, you know what I mean? It's where, where it's at, man. I took a piece of the good masking tape. The good painter's tape, and we did a very, very, very tight sort of, you know what I mean, job on there. We got a little piece of board here. We're going to drizzle a little bit of crazy glue in there, man, super glue like that, right? And then we're going to, like, hyperextend it back onto this piece of flat thing, and you see how it closes up the crack as soon as we put a little pressure on it. We're going to do that, people. We're going to glue it. That's called gluing a piece of plastic. See, we're all glued up, fakes. Mm -hmm. hmm. Not bad, my friends. Not bad at all. You can see the crack. It's been cracked for, I don't know, 30, 40 years, something like that. It's okay, man. So we had it taped, right? We sprinkled a little bit of baking soda on it. You know what I mean? With the crazy glue in it. Got real hard. I don't know. We had the crazy glue in there for about 45 seconds. Then we put the crazy glue on it. Peel this right off. Went to it with some different grades of sand and blocks and then you know, we went to the steel wool you know and then after that we hit it up again with the magic erase sponge which is you know what I mean kind of like smooths out all the other stuff went to rubbing compound pops and compound and this looks nice for the people looks nice for the people man uh, man so let's let it, let it set here sit here and just commiserate just a couple more hours keep blowing out that body you know what I'm saying then we'll reconnect everything will be okay man and as a no doubt. 
All right, so it's actually been about 27 hours. Can you believe that? 27 hours. And clamps that were once real tight, clamps are now kind of loose clamps. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? They're loosened up now, you know what I mean? It means the wood's relaxed even more, man. That's a good thing. I'm going to point this out. This was probably from around 1969. In Korea, 1969, they are still using the same paint. Gibson was using 1959, 10 years earlier. You know what I'm saying? Just to see how it hasn't got any UV rays right at this where the big car was. And it, was, it got like a tinge of red. The red's like totally gone at this part almost. Just like them 59 poles, man. By 60, they had a paint that resisted the UV, man. Korea still using primeval methods. 1969. I remember I saw one guy just swap me had one of these, you know, and with that sticker series. Swore he got it in 1967. Swore he's like, I got this in 1967. It's an old timer, no reason to lie, you know what I mean? I don't know, that's kind of early, you know, from Korea, but I will say one thing. Norman Sackheim, he was the leader, man. Everything that Jack Westheimer claimed to be the first person to do. Norman Sackheim fucking did it three years before. You know what I'm saying? Only thing is, Sackheim died in a tragic plane crash. Early 70s, man. Westheimer lived to be the last of the last of the mouth gab and rah, 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 sandwiches coming out, man. Not that I have nothing against Westheimer, nothing, man. I'm saying, man. Oh, man, Norman, man. Peace be with you, brother. So let's unclamp it, man. Jed, clamp it, unclamp it, unclamp it. Take these clamps off, man. We got some other things to talk about, right? You know what I'm saying? We got some peaceful things to, you know what I mean? Pursue. <laughs> okay, so we got this thing back. It's looking good, man. It's looking corrected. You know what I'm saying? You got your braces off. You look so beautiful. Let's go to Sears and get a picture taken. Anyway, we kind of noticed why it was all fucking... Hyena it out, man. This corner was sticking out, so I'm gonna, you know what I mean, dip a little glue in that and like put a little clamp on here for a couple of hours, man. You know what I mean? I'll see you when we're all ready to take off the clamper. So we put a block on here and protect the old beautiful guitar. We let it sit overnight. Let's pull that thing off, man. Let's start getting this guy ready for school. All right, now let's give it a little dollop furniture polish. Furniture polish. Right? All right, now that we kind of cleaned it off a little, Bert, we're going to try to treat these, you know what I mean, little areas. Man. Also wear that tape. Kind of my fault. You know what I mean? Should I never put the fucking tape on that? Anyway, man, so I do have, as opposed to just bullshit, I got some real lemon oil. This shit's fucking old school, man. It's when they first invented child safety stuff, you know what I mean? It's like late 70s when, like, hippies started becoming serious parents. You know, the hippie generation, like, hey, man, we upstairs smoking with they're downstairs drinking bleach, man. You know what I mean? Oh, look at this. Now we can be upstairs smoking, man. You know what I mean? They can't drink the bleach downstairs. Back in the 50s, 60s, there was the kids upstairs smoking. The parents downstairs drinking bleach. Remember that, man. What the fuck am I talking about? So let's <laughs> let's just take a little bit of steel wool, magic erase sponges, and smear it in these little areas. Real old lemon oil from probably 1977. I'm saying. Just a guesstimate. I mean, conservatively. See these here streaks? Where the guitar is brushed against some kind of white painted surface. Got the magic erase thing. I got the lemon oil soaked in there, man. I'll show you this, man. Shake that thing. Bada bada shake that thing. Shake that thing. Bada bada shake that thing. <laughs> Get it off, man. Take it off. Can he do it? Can he do it? Can he do it? Can he do it? Shake that thing. What about a shake that thing? What about a shake that thing? I'm gonna get a copyright claim just because of my ability to sound like the club man. Straight wins, man. 
Hear that, man? Gone. Gone. See that? Do you see it? In action, rare. Look at that. Gone. All that whited out stuff from the steam coming out the sides of the guitar. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah, it looks great. It looks great. So we got the frets all blackened off. Let's do a fret job on it. This looks like it has a fret job done before. You know what I mean? I see some serious filing on some of these frets. You know what I mean? For probably for a reason. Let's give it an update. Let's oh, some beautiful frets now. Gorgeous, gorgeous frets. Beautiful. So now what we want to do? See these little buck ups, man. You know what I'm saying? Where this this is actually painted wood. It's not even real rosewood, man. You see that? Just painted cleverly. Cleverly. That's like a, like a fake. You know what I mean? Striping here and everything, man. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna take a furniture marker, which is about the right hue, and just you know what I mean. Get rid of all the little white patterns. I'll be right back. We'll talk about dots, man. I'm seeing stars. Touch it up. This, the brown marker isn't really that good, man. So I don't really want to talk about it anymore. So now I got this as a piece of plastic that I painted white for another episode. I don't remember what it was. So episode. Go back and look at them. This one I remember because it wasn't that long ago. This is from the Mike episode. For the cameos, I believe, right? Or maybe the Atlas Long Island one. It wasn't that long ago. Anyway, we're going to cut little holes out of here. Three of them for here. One, two. Where's the other one? Three, right? And then we're going to cut out a white one for here. Glue them all on a little tight bind. Hi, my name is Tight Bind. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm alright. I was just waiting for my close-up. Alright, Tight Bind. So... There we go, man. I'll see you in a minute. Holy kabosh. Holy kabosh, no. Holy kabosh, no, no. That's great, people. I'm so proud of me. I'm so proud of me. I should be on a postage stamp. And these were, like, falling off, too. You know, the originals. Whichever ones they were. It's like a little shot of crazy glue, actually, man. Crazy glue is what I used on the older ones, man. These ones had the the new ones had like adhesive already on them, so I just put a little shot of shot of tight bond, you know what I'm saying? Strategy people, strategy. This one actually put a little bit of of hot glue gun glue underneath it. You know what I'm saying? Shortcuts, kid. Shortcuts. You know what I'm saying? Easy in, easy out. So let's take a little bit of that old lemon oil and just smear it in here. Just just you know what I mean? Smear it in there nice and nice and correctly. A little, you know what I mean? Piece of magic erase, you know, sponge. Very carefully and cautiously. Let it set for a couple minutes there and wipe it off. Wipe it off, son. Now I reckon well that's a setting in that dry finish, Earl. Let's give it a little bit of a little bit of a, a look. See, a little bit of clean up with some of the furniture markers. See that? See that? This guy make that guy go right away, man. Hey, Tony, you make him go right away. You know what I mean? Forget about it, all right? And then you got to pay a tribute, all right? You understand what that means, right? All right? All right? All right? All right? Peace be with you. All right, for now. Look at it. Look at how it looks great. <laughs> So I got a little bit of butcher's wax for the fret, the fright board, and a little bit of mom's for the rest. We're gonna do that now, man. You know what I'm saying? Now we're gonna do that. Let's see, after we're all sheeny, shiny, shiny, or sheeny. Yes, now we got it all sheeny, shiny. Do a mirror like gloss, gloss mirror, gloss. Fantastical. Let's put this here pick guard back on, man. Let's guard our picks, man. You know what I'm saying? And uh, no doubt. No shit, Chet. No shit. You're absolutely right, Chet. You're absolutely right, man. Look at this, people. So right about now, you'd be like, I'll see you at the glam shots. Start find that string. We still got one in pertinent detail that I'd like to address. 
to the court and to the Congress. This fucking little patch of fucking emptiness, man. What the fuck? Let's talk about that. Let's do something about it. Last and certainly not least, we want to reproduce this particular Korea sticker right here. You see that Korea sticker here? This is the FG7 that we keep talking about. We talked about it so much. We made a whole episode about it a couple months ago. Just like to talk, man, about the same old shit over and over again. But in that case, we didn't talk about reproducing the sticker because it's already here. Right? I'm a smart guy. Anyway, so let's reproduce it. And, you know what I mean? In the last video, we did something very similar, but we just sort of like watched another video about it, man. You know what I mean? So I already had them done from another project. But this, we have to do them. Shorter video, so we'll go over it for you guys who are just tuning in. So we're going to take a picture of this particular sticker right here in a high definition form and we'll just zoom in and take the picture just like so so let's talk about the sticker man you know what i'm saying how are we gonna get it from here man we got it in the computer we got the picture man so what we did, right, what we have done, first we turned it into like more of a line art. You know what I'm saying? And in Photoshop, we pretty much extracted the logo. You know what I'm saying? And we printed it out on a piece of paper, as you can see here. It's a laser jet printer. And I got a piece of adhesive, you know what I mean, backed. You know what I mean? Just so I conserve as much as possible i'm just going to put this here and run it through the laser jet man run it through the laser jet i'll see you upstairs man oh and there it goes folks laser jet printer man oh special little trick for people see that oh <gasps> We'll take these out back in a minute and spray coat of lacquer on them. You know, I got this printer at PC Richards in like 2013. And now, you know what I mean, Tom, I'll tell you a little story. Man. So, I went there, I got a flyer in the mail, right? My, I had two young daughters, you know what I mean? And the uh, flyer in the mail said, uh, it said $69.99 tablet. You know what I mean? One of those smart tablets when they first came out. This is when the infancy of tablets. You know what I'm saying? Now, my wife had an iPad. You know what I mean? An app product. Things were expensive. Two little girls. Forget it. You know what I'm saying? Forget it. So, we went down there with this coupon to PC Richards. You know what I'm saying? And we got the last two of the tablets. The last two of the two. When I was there, I found like a $200 Sony camera for like $79. I found this printer, a laser printer. I always want a laser jet printer. It cost me $99, right? You see that, man? Did a great job. Anyway, so I got home, you know what I mean? And one of the, uh, one of the tablets was broken, man. Can you believe that shit? One of the tablets was broken, and it was a, like, last tablet there. So I called up the store, you know what I mean, frantically. Like, oh, you know, that was a promotion. We ain't gonna have any more of them. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, oh, you know what I mean? She's like, let me call around the other, other branches, you know what I mean? She actually called me back. She said, no, sir. I'm very sorry. You know what I mean? That was a hot, a hot item, man. It was a hot item. It's all gone. I was like, ah. Oh. You know what I mean? Anyway, thanks for, for, you know, thanks for everything. She's like, no, 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 no. Wait up, sir. You know what I'm saying? Wait up. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, let me put it on back order for you. You know what I mean? We might be getting some, you know, soon. You know what I mean? Some restocking or whatever. And I'll give you a call if it comes in. I was like, yeah, really? You know what I mean? Otherwise, just bring it back to the store. You know what I mean? We'll give you a refund for it. Cool, you know what I mean? So I waited a couple days, you know what I mean? Got a call, it was like a Tuesday, you know what I mean? It was a cold, rainy ass Tuesday, you know what I mean? Went up there, PC Richards by myself to, you know what I mean? You know, replace this tablet, you know what I'm saying? And uh, so I get up to the counter, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, go to customer service. I go to customer service, there's like a dude, oh, he didn't look like he was worked in customer service, you know what I mean? And there's a little sign, you know what I mean? About the history of PC Richards, you know what I mean? I said, uh, I was like, is there really PC Richard and his son? Or is this just some kind of, he's like, oh, no, no, no. 
there is PC Richard and, and his son. I was like, really? Was like, That's pretty cool. You know what I mean? And I was like, I love history. This is pretty cool that you guys have your history preserved. Some companies don't even care about it. You know, I was going on about it. I'm talking about the history of the different companies, whatever. And the guys like looked this other guy and kind of gave him a weird look. And I was like, also behind the customer service. But you know what I mean? Looked a little ritzy, this dude. And the other dude come up to me. He's like, he's like, my friend. And he gave me the new tablet. He's like, would you like to meet PC Richard's son? I was like, get the fuck out of here. Would I like to meet him? Hell yeah, I like to go out and hang out with the motherfucker. We had a good old time, man. He's like, well, you know what I mean? He's got a, a secret office in all these locations. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, this was an Eaton Town location. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh, I was like, so, you know what I mean? I'll take you to meet him. And I'll, I'll, let me go talk to him first. You know what I mean? He loves to meet, you know, other people. You know, I was like, oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, that's real cool. You know what I mean? I got all nervous, you know? And he went out, and, uh, you know what I mean? He comes back. And he's like, he's like, look, goes the other guy. They look at each other like they're secret service. You know what I mean? Like, like, you, PC Richard's son, he'll, he'll meet you. And I was like, oh, it's cool, man. That's real cool. Like, you know, I felt like I was a meet queen. You know what I mean? I was all, all nervous. I was sweating and shit. And he got his office, this little old man behind his desk. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? I was like, oh, PC Richard, man, I was sweating. And then this dude was like, this is Mr. PC Richard's son. And I was like, oh, shit. You know, this PC Richard's son is crazy. And like, you know what I mean? I, I was like, you know what I mean? Was a little nervous. And I didn't know to like, talk to him because he's real old and brittle looking. You know what I mean? Or hug him or shake his hand or whatever. And the guy's like, you know what I mean? You know, he, like, he would like to know if you'd like an autographed copy of his autobiography. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Like, sure, I like autographed copies. And he's like, PC Richard's son, you know what I mean? Like, so I like, looked around, and the dude put a book in front of him, and he signed it. It was this book right here, people. Work well done. 100-year story, PC Richard and his son, right? And the dude opened a book for him. And yeah, P.C. Richard's son signed that shit, man. Uh, Gary Richards looks like his name was, right? This was Eaton Town location, man. Right? And, and like, the dude handed me the book and he opened part of his lips. And you know what he said to me? He said something that sounded like, me, me. And he sat back down. And I said, this is the fucking weirdest, this is the weirdest shit that's happened to me all fucking day, man. And I had a weird fucking day. And P.C. Richard's son's like, Bleh. <laughs> he started coughing violently. I was like, oh shit. And, I, and I, like the dude like started patting him. He's like, you know, grandpa, are you all right? And I was like, I'm sorry, PC Richard's son, man. You know what I mean? I just booked out of here with my book, you know what I mean? My new tablet, man. That's it, man. You know what I mean? $99, man. I had almost 10 years. Uh, PC Richard's son, man. Rest in peace, man. I don't know if you're still alive, man. Work well done, man. Now, I only went to that PC Richards like two times, man. Those two times when I got the tablet and when I met fucking Richard's son, man. Then it was gone. I think it's the best buy now. Got lacquer on these. They look all lacquery, all nice. See how in this one little, little one here, little toner fell off just like on the original, man. Isn't that crazy, man? Isn't that spectacular? I'm not going to use that one, though. I'm going to use like a nice one from up here. Let's cut one out. Take a little bit of rubbing alcohol, alcohol, and let's just loosen up this adhesive a little bit so we can sort of bring this adhesive into this adhesive and we can have a reunion, a family reunion. See you in a little bit, my friend. Oh, oh. oh. look at that. All of our gold metallic stickers were stored. One original, one repro. Oh, very proud of you, Kim Jong-un. Very proud of you. All right, so let's reach for that spare E-string, and I'll see you at the old glamour shots, my friends. Your work is complete here, my son. Every now and then, every once in a great blue, you know what I'm saying? One of them comes along. It surprises you. And this is one of them great blues. You know what I'm saying? I tightened them strings up, brought it to pitch, strummed it. I was like, oh, that felt good. That sounded pretty good. Did it again. I was like, oh. Am I missing something here? Now, I looked online, did a little study of these, you know. Normans. I guess it's got to be late 60s, early 70s. 
You know what I mean? The guy died in a plane crash, a horrible plane crash in 1971. So the company didn't last very much longer after that. You know what I mean? Has to be from that period, right? And, uh, hey, man, you know what I mean? It looks like as the number acoustically goes up, it's like a better model. You know what I mean? The last one we talked about was an FG7. Yeah, the trap piece, tail piece. You know what I mean? This has like an adjustable bridge. So between 7 and 17, there's a lot of refinement in the accoutrements, man. You know what I'm saying? That's a fine sort of, a fine instrument, man. It's got a couple of little, you know what I mean? Obvious goof-ups, early Korean production. This right here, little hole. This is from, you know, a manufacturing defect. I'm putting the... You know what I mean? Screws in and put it down in the wrong place to start with. You know what I'm saying? That's there. You know, bad. Like, oh, sorry, sorry, fucked it up. Anyway, you know, sounds like a gorgeous dream. It sounds like Sunday school, man. Like when you were a kid. It brings you back. You know what I'm saying? It brings you back to a mellow feeling. You know what I'm saying? It's a sacred sort of sound. Secret familiar sound of the Norma FG-17. Let's listen to it, man. I've talked so much. I've talked so goddamn much. And I'm sorry about that. I dragged a 12-minute episode out into 40 million minutes. Let's hear it. And then we can say, Peace be with you. So the conclusion of Video Journal 76, Norma, FG-17, a fine early Korean production guitar for our friend Norma Sakai. Beautiful, this sounds beautiful. It's beautiful. 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 So it's about 1970, 69. Yeah, Here's a great one. Here's Wonder Man. Woman, you're touching my soul now. I'm gonna go now. Ooh, what a beautiful feeling. Oh, no. Just a little bit tired now, baby. I love you so much. band is alive and kicking it's a great song man i don't know anything about that band i don't know if any of them are alive and kicking but i hope you are if not rest in peace rest in peace norman sackheim peace be with you all my lovely friends man out there on the internet man god bless you man peace be with you look after yourself peace be with you look after yourself you know the drill man i'll see you next time we'll be friends then